So Google Messages has come on a lot over the last few years, and it's actually rich with features, if you don't already know. This RCS application has a lot of settings that you can change to make this a fantastic default message application on Google Pixel or any other Android phone. And this video is going to guide you through everything we think you should set right away on Google Messages on your Android device. So the most obvious and important component of Google Messages should be set up right away when you launch it for the first time. RCS messaging is RCS chats in messages. It's the bedrock for all of the features that make this a solid default messaging client. We're not going to get into every single feature of RCS, but now that iOS 18 has added RCS for supported carriers on iPhone devices, you can have a much better messaging experience across those Android and iOS borders. The core features are things like typing indicators, better group chats, less reliance on MMS, and way more. Not everyone, though, has RCS working right, right away, so it's definitely worth checking. And to do so, just go to Google Messages, open that now in the top right, tap your profile photo, and now tap Message Settings. From here, select RCS Chat. Now tap Enable Chat Features and confirm if you haven't done so already. One of the biggest frustrations of any messaging platform is what happens if a text or photo fails to send. Often it's as straightforward as hitting send again. That said, there is a way to ensure that your message or image gets to the sent to the person you're sending it to, regardless of whether RCS messaging is working as intended or not, if you follow that first step. There is a toggle to ensure that if your message or photo fails to send, it will revert to good old SMS or an MMS message if you have that option. This is the Google Messages equivalent of the popular iMessage SMS fallback cliche that everyone throws around, and it works very much in the same way. It's disabled though by default, but it's found within the RCS settings in Google Messages. And to check, just open Google Messages application, go to that top right profile photo and tap that. Now hit message settings, then select RCS chats. Now toggle automatically resend as text, which will be in brackets SMS or MMS. Please be aware that this might add extra charges to your cell plan if you don't have unlimited SMS messaging or MMS messaging as part of your monthly payments. So tread cautiously if you are going to enable this on your phone. So Gemini and Google Messages is one of those things I think actually 99.9% .9 of you out there should disable right away in Google's first party messaging platform. And while sending messages directly to Gemini might seem useful, it's just way better in the dedicated application or in a web browser and just really out of place in this SMS replacement application. It's limited in messages as well, so it feels like a pointless value add attempt. Plus, it actually gets rid of the message view of the annoying Gemini button above that start chat button, making the application a lot more clutter free. If you're frustrated by this little icon appearing all the time and you want to remove it, just open Google Messages. Now tap the profile photo in the top right, then tap message settings, select Gemini in messages and now toggle the show Gemini button and it will be gone from that main message view. So if you've followed that first step and RCS messaging is working on your application and sent photos to your contacts using the option, you might have noticed that they're compressed quite heavily once you hit that send button. And by default, there is actually a setting that optimizes media to help send that content faster so that your contacts don't have to wait around for large files to arrive. This means you'll actually go and have to disable the send photos faster setting so that only the best quality images reach those all important contacts and group chats. Sure, these files will take up more space on the recipient's devices, but the visual uplift is quite noticeable. So I think it's worth making that change now. To do so, what you want to do is open Google Messages. Now go to that top right profile icon and tap it. Now tap message settings, then toggle off send photos faster. And you should see an improvement straight away. One of the other best things about Google Messages, or at least that Google Messages can do, is automatically delete OTPs or one-time passwords after 24 hours in your inbox. One-time passwords can clog up your inbox and become difficult to see important conversations if they start blocking it. One annoyance is that, sadly, this isn't available in all regions, like it's not available for me here in the UK, but it's great for people that can access it. So we thought it would be fair to share the option. So to have this option, delete one-time passwords, just open Google Messages, tap your profile photo in the top right, now tap message settings, hit message organization, now toggle on auto delete one-time passwords. And hopefully the next time you go into your inbox in the next few days, a lot of them should be deleted. So voice messages are a feature that is available here in Google Messages if you didn't already know, and they come in handy all too often if you do want to impart a lot of information in a short space of time. But they can prove frustrating if the receiving party can't exactly listen to them at the time they've been sent. Fortunately, Google Messages can automatically transcribe those voice messages. This makes it easier for both sender and receiver 
so that one doesn't have to worry about typing and the other doesn't need to put in earbuds in a crowded space to listen to those voice messages you've sent. And to enable this, what you want to do is go to Google Messages, tap that profile photo in the top right as always, and now tap Message Settings, select Voice Message Transcription, and then toggle the feature on. So depending on your phone, the text transcription can sometimes take a few seconds to process, but most of the time it's practically instant. Processing does take place locally on the device too, so there's no need to upload to a server and it means it's a little bit more secure. Just tap the view transcript button under the voice note to see the full text output of the messages you've sent or received. And it works a lot like a text message, allowing you to scroll up and down and see what that person has said in text form. So a multimedia messaging application needs to work well with lots of message types. And if you send lots of links or web pages, you might want to set up the automatic preview function in Google Message. In basic terms, this gives you a visual card preview of the link that has been sent or received with any images or other rich visual media available. It works with websites, Google Maps, directions and other services, but is especially useful for things like YouTube and other video links. And they just look better than a text hyperlink. To enable this, and I think you should, open Google Messages, tap your profile photo in the top right, now tap Message Settings, then select Automatic Previews, toggle the Show All Previews option, and it should improve the experience of sending and receiving links in Google Messages. Google Messages also leverages AI to offer a variety of helpful suggestions to you, including smart replies, suggested actions, stickers, and even nudges. And these features are designed to streamline your messaging experience by providing relevant options when you potentially need them the most. For example, if you mention a location, the app might suggest sharing your current location by automating other common tasks and uncovering hidden features. I do think Google Messages does let you communicate a little bit more effectively and add a little bit more, maybe automation to your communications. All of the options are just nice quality of life additions that can be super helpful. If you do want them, what you wanna do is open Google Messages, tap your profile photo in the top right, now tap Message Settings, then tap Suggestions, and toggle on the type of suggestions that you want to be enabled. Sometimes the quickest way to let someone know that their message has been understood is just to send an emoji, or better still, a message reaction. This function has been around for a while with some impressive workarounds by Google to allow it to work at all. And with RCS between iPhone and Android, we now have fully working message reactions. And I think this is a really good way to, well, at least as far as I'm concerned, annoy your iPhone loving friends. And to do so, what you wanna do is open Google Messages, tap that profile photo in the top right, now tap message settings, find and tap advanced, now toggle on show iPhone reactions as emoji. It does work really nicely on Android and it'll work in both directions, but on iOS, it sends another message to confirm that reaction. So I'm not saying you could, you should, but you could spam your friends if you really wanted to. So by no means is that an exhaustive list of things we think you should enable in Google Messages as there are way too many things to list in this video. Just a few things that you should set up straight away to get the most from Google Messages, even on a friend or family member's phone. Get them set up, get them really using Google Messages as is intended, as this is a great application. It might not be WhatsApp, it might not be Telegram, it might not be Signal, but it is a really good option by default on millions, even potentially billions of Android phones out there. If you have a favorite feature that you set up right away in Google Messages, let us know down in the comment sections below. I'm really interested to hear how you use this application or if, like a lot of Europeans, for instance, like myself, you don't really use it all that often. But let me know down in the comment sections below. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope this has helped you get the most from one of those first party applications on your Android phone. But until next time, as I say, thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.